Hey all, Mr. Gibson here, next lesson in cryptography. Today we're going to be talking about the Trithemia cipher, which is one of our polyalphabetic cipher that, is, that uses the tabula recta. So we mentioned in a previous lesson that uh, Johann Trithemius was the first person to really put out the idea of the tabula recta, and as such, um, he had some thoughts about how to generate that running key that you could use along with it. So the Trithemia cipher is that method. It's an algorithm used to generate the running key. Um, as originally envisioned by Johannes himself, uh, not very secure, and we'll see why in just a moment. Uh, but we're going to look at all also that we can we can make a few improvements along the way. Um, so here it is. So we've got this alphabet, 26 letters, uh, and we're going to move through it in a pattern to generate the running key. Now see if you can pick up on the pattern. It's pretty subtle. We start at A. We go to B. Then we go to C. And then we go to D. And then we go to E. And yeah, that's not very secure. That was it. There was no variation on that. Every single time you used his cipher, um, you would start at the letter A for your key and just move one letter at a time down the alphabet to generate your running key. Uh, you almost can't even call that a key because there's no way to change it. There's one key for the system and that's it. So if you know it was a Trithemia cipher, you know the key, you know the method, it's very insecure. Now it turns out there are some ways that we can improve upon this. We just need some flexibility. Johannes was not very flexible. So we're going we're gonna to introduce some flexibility into the system. So here we go. Let's update the Trithemia cipher for our use. So the very first thing we could do is just pick a different letter to start at. The idea of moving down the alphabet isn't a bad one, but if you always start at A, you're not really changing much. So here's a situation where we start at the letter H and we move one letter to the right. We'll call that our offset. You could describe that either numerically with a number or you can just straight up specify, I'm starting at the letter H. Um, and that acts as your key. So the fact that you could start at 26 different letters to start your running key means there's, there's 26 possibilities here. So the security at this point is about on par as a Caesar cipher, right? Our Caesar cipher had 26 possible keys. This has 26 possible keys. It would be a little bit harder if you were to actually look at the output of your ciphertext and analyze that for frequency analysis. It would do a better job disguising it. So if somebody wasn't maybe sure on the cipher that was used, um, they would look at the bar chart of a, of a ciphertext created with this Trithemius cipher, and it would not look like Caesar. So that might be a good way to kind of throw somebody off. But once they narrow it down to Trithemius, only 26 keys, they'll probably figure that out pretty quickly. So let's take a look at how this gets implemented in practice. So again, standard tabula recta, we've generated our running key starting at H, we have the plain text word Neville, and we work through the exact same way with our tabula recta, nothing different, we move down the line, find the row, find the column, find the intersection, or mathematically convert the, the key in the plain text to numbers, add and mod by 26. Nothing new here. All right, let's update the Trithemius once more. So in addition to saying where we're gonna start generating the running key, we can talk about how far we wanna to step to get to the next letter in the running key. So in this example, we have an offset of 18, so we're starting at the letter S, and we're gonna move forward by three every time that we move down the alphabet. So we start at S, and then we move three spots to the right to get the V, three spots to the right to get the Y, three spots to the right to get to B, wrapping around, three spots to the right to get to E, and so on. Uh, we just keep going, wrapping around, around, and around, and around, creating our new running key. Now, the reason why that's really powerful is you've got 25 options on how to step forward. You could step one spot, two spot, three spot, all the way up to 25 spots. 26 spots would not be valid because that would just put you right back at the letter S. So we could say that we've got one through 25, or 25 options, combined with the 26 options on where to start, we end up with 650 different keys that we could use with the Trithemia cipher. Now, that's a lot more than we've actually seen so far. It's about double that what we saw we could do with the affine cipher. So just with some slight tweaking on a really insecure cipher that Trithemia uh, himself proposed, we get a lot more key options than we ever had with any of the other ciphers so far. And we're going to see that's going to be a long time goal of this course is to keep finding tweaks on ciphers to increase the number of possible keys because that makes the likelihood of being successful on a brute force attack um, or even using chi-squared scoring in an automated way, it really reduces how likely it is that that's going to let somebody crack the message. So there's our Trithemia cipher. 
You now know a few ways to generate that running key in collaboration with your tabula recta. Uh, we're off to a good start here on disguising our letter frequencies uh, by using a polyalphabetic cipher. And we're doing that in a pretty easy to implement by hand way. And we'll soon start to think about how can we use the computer to speed this up even further. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one.